Um, I'm Mark Adamanis. I'm a contributor at Forbes and a columnist uh, for Inosmi, and I'm guest hosting uh, Worldwise this morning. I'm speaking with uh, Wojciech Borodzic from the Center for International Relations in Warsaw. Uh, morning, Wojciech. How are you doing? Hello. I'm, I'm doing great. We have a sunny, hot summer, and, and it's uh, hard to, to, to live in the city, but still, it's a great opportunity to, to talk with you and, and to, to share with you my views on it's been pretty similar in D.C., unfortunately. We've been, <laughs> even by D.C. standards, it's been pretty sweltering. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, speak. So obviously Mitt Romney was recently uh, in Poland. He was uh, there as part of his first major tour as the GOP nominee. Um, and I found it interesting because I, I follow, I write about Russia most of the time. Um, but obviously uh, Poland and, and the other Central Eastern European countries factor into American discussions about our policy vis-a-vis -vis Russia, uh, the GOP and the Republican Party. Uh, has been uh, very uh, antagonistic towards the policies of the reset, towards Obama's supposed appeasement of the Russians, uh, and Romney hit a lot of these same themes uh, in his speeches and in his in his tour when he was over there. So I guess I wanted to start with asking um, how polls received Romney. Obviously, there's been a narrative here, particularly in certain parts of the conservative media, over how well Romney was received and how well his speech supposedly went over. But I wanted to ask you, uh, to what extent is that true? How did polls see the visit? Uh, to what extent did he even pay attention to it? Well, yeah, the media uh, definitely uh, shared this uh, uh, great opportunity of, of having him drum and uh, interviewing him or asking his question or hearing what he has to say. But nobody in Poland expected that uh, this visit will change something dramatically in Polish-U.S. relations. And um, everyone in Poland uh, knows that the things which Romney is saying at the moment are, are the things which he is saying in the election campaign. What will become after campaign, uh, if he will be a president of the United States, is a completely different story. And uh, Polish media definitely uh, noticed that uh, thanks to this visit, Poland is again um, on the highlights of, of the U.S. media, which is not happening uh, often. And, and that, that is good. Thanks to Romney, we had a great PR campaign, but uh, we don't expect this visit will change uh, dramatically Polish-U.S. relations. And I guess to maybe dig a little more deeply in terms of Polish-U.S. relations, uh, obviously some of the Republicans presented Romney's, uh, the reason that he should go to Poland was because uh, Obama has treated Poland so poorly. Um, there's a whole discussion about how we've forgotten our loyal allies and abandoned the Poles at the, at the foot of the reset. Um, I guess let's talk a little bit more about how Polish opinion views Obama's foreign policy, because certainly I remember seeing some, some polls and, and some indications that Obama was, was reasonably popular um, in, in Poland, maybe not overwhelmingly so, but he certainly wasn't any kind of hate figure. Uh, but again, in the Republican and U.S. conservative narrative, um, Obama is or ought to be, you know, just absolutely completely unpopular. And the kind of positions that Romney was attempting to stake out would um, presumably be much more popular and more well received by the Polish public. To what extent is that really true? Well, you know, Obama uh, has been popular in Poland, especially during his election campaign. Um, firstly, because uh, uh, of his uh, famous uh, slogan, "Yes, we can." Uh, but uh, then, then we were extremely interested in how the, 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 the Mr. Obama can change United States, and to what extent uh, his uh, personal life uh, can influence the, the U.S. policy, and. We, of course, were, were so much interested in Obama because that this is the first uh, Afro-American which is, who is uh, the President of the United States, so that, was, that also was a kind of historic moment. Um, and, of course, uh, we knew this, uh, his presidency will be unique, uh, and we wanted to, to have some changes after the Bush uh, Jr. presidency, but uh, we had uh, no, uh, we have uh, extremely big uh, expectations. Uh, however, those expectations has been uh, built on some, let's say, maybe fake, maybe over exaggerated uh, um, uh, feelings of polls towards Americans. We always tend to think that uh, U.S. foreign policy and U.S. itself is ready to bend its own uh, national interest. Uh, uh, however, 
it happens, and it uh, it happens all the time that, uh, as we see, uh, uh, this is not the United States is bombing its own national interest, but but uh, their allies who wants to be together with the states or, or not. Well, I guess Obama, to a certain extent, to kind of draw some contrasts uh, between, I guess, his policies and what Romney's might or might not be. Um, is there anything, I guess, concrete or specific uh, that there's agreement on that, you know, polls would have liked to see from Obama's policy, uh, both towards Poland itself and towards, I guess, the, the general Central and Eastern Europe, that, that they haven't seen? Because, um, again, you know, you hear an awful lot in conservative media and from geo various kinds of GOP uh, representatives that, oh, you know, what Obama's done hasn't been well received and they want us to do something else. So. Are there any kind of concrete disappointments that you thought Obama would do X and he did Y, or he just you know didn't follow through on his promises? Well, um, of course, uh, of course, we were surprised with the decisions of Obama regarding the uh, missile defense system, um, and, and, uh, and, and and we felt a little bit. Uh, uh, well, I don't think it traded, but uh, but. It's, well, let's say discouraged with uh, uh, future future cooperation. However, we have to uh, uh, we need to understand that um, uh, uh, probably each and every president of the United States would try to solve his bigger bigger problem and, and not the, the, the smaller ones. And actually, in this terms, uh, the Iran was a bigger problem, and the, the, the bigger deal was to, to, to make some agreement with Russia than, than with, uh, with with Poles and with other countries in the Central Eastern Europe. Um, and that those countries can be could be uh, agreed in someone uh, on some other in some other way, uh, like for example, selling some new technique or or or, uh, or, or new weapons or or. or, or or at least uh, uh, giving some, uh, some, some money for, for other um, uh, facilities. So do you think that, obviously, uh, Romney has been incredibly um, critical of the reset, um, and his, if you look at his campaign website, you look at his promises, he, he pretty explicitly says that he'll scrap it. Uh, he will kind of revert to essentially the kind of George W. Bush style uh, confrontation of the Kremlin, you know, no unapologetic uh, promotion of democracy and, and, and such like that. Uh, do you think that that kind of policy shift would be well received in Poland? Do you think that that would actually be a, a, a wise thing to do? But again, Romney's been very, very specific and explicit that you know the minute he gets into the White House, if he does, that you know the reset's over, um, and that is kind of I don't know back to a bad cop type of relationship with Russia. Do you think that Poles support that? Do you think that that would actually be in Poland's interest to have a renewed or worsened antagonism between the U.S. and Russia? Well, I think that uh, Nate Romney's website is definitely not uh, concrete and uh, not full of details. Uh, and uh, if we want to, 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 to if, if we as a, as, a, as a people who are living in the Central and Eastern Europe uh, would like to, to build something on Mitch Romney's uh, addresses uh, and, and after visiting the, the website of, of Mitch Romney, then we would totally understand that Central and Eastern Europe is not important for Mitch Romney because there is uh, actually no word about Central and Eastern Europe. There are words about Israel, about Russia, Iran, uh, but no about uh, this concrete region. This is one thing. The second thing is that, in my view, when Mitch Romney will, will get to the White House and will sit in the chair, he will definitely have uh, uh, a lot of other things to do and uh, will have to deal with the situation as it is and not as he would like to be. Uh, the problem with uh, those uh, 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 those sentences and addresses which Romney, uh, which Romney makes uh, towards Russia uh, by saying that Russia is number one threat and, and so on, and he wants to build uh, a deeper cooperation with uh, uh, Central Asian countries uh, like Kazakhstan, uh, maybe, uh, are, are um, unrealistic. Uh, those countries are even more not democratic than, than Russia. And, uh, and, and Russia is not the biggest threat uh, in the region at the moment. Uh, at the moment, the biggest threat in the region are 
probably China and, and probably the uns, unstabilized uh, social situation in Russia itself. Um, and, and how how uh, Mitt Romney is willing to, to to work with Russia? I mean, he cannot simply say that he will not discuss anything with uh, uh, a nuclear country, um, and and he will be simply waiting for the great change in this country when there is no visible opposition and no visible leader who can uh, change the situation dramatically in Russia. So. Um, uh, and, and again, uh, Polish-Russian uh, relations recently uh, uh, became less, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, less aimed at uh, promoting democracy, but more aimed at promoting business and, 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 and pragmatic value. Um, so uh, we don't think that this kind of approach is realistic. I think this kind of approach is, a, is an approach which is aimed at the U.S. election campaign, and, uh, and, and after elections, it will be corrected by the reality. So you, so you would argue that uh, it's all posturing that there will be a, a fundamental continuity between a potential Romney administration and some of what the Obama folks have been doing? Actually, uh, well, I don't think that uh, Mitch Romney will be able to to bend national interest of the United States and to change national interest of the United States. And uh, I think that uh, each president of the United States, uh, no matter if that would be Obama or Romney, will have the same problems and will have limited, uh, 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 limited solutions to those problems. I mean, uh, we cannot uh, uh, expect that the United States will, uh, for example, support some underground movements in Russia. Because that's uh, that's impossible in this uh, in this uh, situation. That would mean that the United States will be soon in war with Russia, and that is not in the interest of the United States. So um, I think all what Romney said in Poland was not aimed at the Poles in Poland, but was aimed at the Polish Americans uh, and 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 and, uh, and U.S. society in the election campaign, and it was because uh, they wanted to show that uh, Mitt Romney has some international experience and is willing and is able to get, uh, 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 if not support, then a kind of uh, uh, good, uh, good relations with the leaders of the Central Eastern Europe. And Poland was good because uh, it's a Catholic country, it's, uh, it's a country of white violence and he's, uh, and he's legend. This is country of, of the legend of John Paul II and this is also the country which uh, still can be described as a successful story of the transformation. And again, if someone wants to have a success from the US, he should come to the Poland, because any time and everywhere Poles will be extremely uh, positive uh, for, for, for each uh, US citizen who is uh, uh, um, willing to become president. So I guess uh, I was wondering if we could talk maybe just a little bit more about Walensa. Um, Obviously, in, in certain parts of the U.S. Uh, media, again, particularly among conservatives, um, Walensa is still extremely popular. Uh, he's very much still the kind of figure from the transition from the you know, solidarity struggle, the fight against the Soviet Union, um, and the kind of transition to democracy and capitalism. Um, to what extent, and, I, and so you know, his endorsement of Romney uh, attracted you know, a fair bit of, of attention over here. Uh, to what extent is Walensa still a very relevant uh, political figure uh, in Poland? Because I remember I, I have written some things about Poland, and I actually, as an undergrad, uh, I, I wrote quite a long paper about some of the kind of transition from communism there. And I was actually surprised by how rapidly his political star kind of faded once he was, once he was in office. Um, and that's, I guess, something that you see among a lot of the kind of old hero dissidents in that part of the world. I mean, Havel was extraordinarily popular in the United States, but he wasn't terribly, mean, he was, I don't know, uh, reasonably popular in the Czech Republic, but not nearly the kind of universal adulation that he would get in, in, the, in the United States. Um, to what extent, yeah, so I guess we could just talk a little bit more about, like, you know, what meaning did, uh, did Valencia's endorsement really have, and to what extent it was it, you know, shared uh, by most Poles themselves? Well, firstly, um, it, it needs to be stressed that uh, 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 I don't think Valencia has officially endorsed Mitt Romney. Uh, that's how it was uh, written in the U.S. press, but uh, in reality, it was not like that. He simply uh, said that he is hearing to all 
uh, uh, who are wishing to talk with Valenza and, uh, and, and he is, uh, you know, he, he will not endorse anyone because that is not in the interest of Poland. What will happen if, if, if not Romney will win the elections and, 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 and if that still would be Obama? So, uh, I don't think uh, this endorsement uh, had place. However, uh, however, Valenza, as, as you mentioned, and as in other dissidents and, and, and leaders of, this, uh, of the communist time, uh, is, is not uh, appreciated by Poles as, uh, for example, future president or as a politician. But still, he gained some respect uh, from uh, a lot of uh, uh, people. And uh, this respect is uh, is that they, they simply want to hear what he has to say. He is saying with a very simple language, uh, um, uh, without any, uh, any any beautiful words. And uh, his uh, his um, assessment of reality is extremely realistic, and, uh, and, and 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 because of that, it's is is very good. All right, um, and I guess so. Still on, I guess, the general subject of kind of domestic Polish politics. Um, if we could maybe talk a little bit more, because, you know, for example, we were speaking about the reset earlier. And obviously, in American domestic politics, there are huge cleavages and huge disagreements, uh, even among the elite uh, policymakers, about whether that's the appropriate thing to do. Is it right or is it wrong? Um, to what extent uh, is there agreement among, I guess, both the Polish public and among Polish kind of elite opinion makers of, you know, what a desirable relationship with the United States looks like. Is there actually any real disagreement over how, you know, the NATO alliance ought to work, um, how the kind of Atlantic, you know, security relationship functions, or is there relatively broad agreement on kind of the general outlines of, of how the U.S. and Poland interact? Well, actually, actually, in, in this particular issue in Poland, there is a general agreement about the presence of the United States in this part of Europe, about the activities of the United States in NATO. And uh, we are all uh, afraid that the United States is simply willing to limit the role in NATO and in, in, in Europe itself. And we don't think that that would be good. Uh, however, we also understand some uh, uh, economic problems and, uh, and, and, uh, and, 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 and strategic problems the uh, United States are facing. But nevertheless, all political powers in Poland are in favor of, of, of having a strong and viable presence of the United States in Europe. We, we still think this is, this is one of the guarantees of, 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 of the security uh, in this part of the world. Do you think there would be support? So, I, I, you know, I remember I wrote something last week. I was very surprised. You know, Mitt Romney was talking about uh, Poland's kind of economic experience, its government priorities as being very much in line with his own values. But then if you look at how the Polish government actually spends money uh, to American eyes, it's almost unre you know, unrecognizable. I mean, uh, the, the defense budget is a much smaller percentage of government spending. Welfare spending is much, much higher. Uh, do you think that should, you know, the United States, I don't know, come to some new agreement about the appropriate... I guess, balance of how much it spends versus how much its European allies spend, uh, do you think that, I don't know, that that, that would be popular in, in Poland? Because even I was surprised, looking at some of the figures, you know, um, again, you know, in, in, in many American narratives of that part of the world, um, there's apparently a really serious threat that the Baltics and Poland and other countries are facing, um, I mean, a very a military threat, you describe it, um, as, you know, kind of a, a renewed imperial Russia, but then you look at how much they actually spend in the militaries, and they don't appear to be particularly troubled by it because you know, they spend you know 1.8 percent of uh, GDP on defense, and again you know in America we're spending multiples of that. Um, so I guess we could talk maybe just a little bit about you know to what extent do polls actually feel threatened by the environment in, that they're in, and to what extent would they be willing to pick up you know more of the slack in a very kind of concrete dollars and cents thing if, as seems likely, the United States will have to backtrack. Um, from the kind of position of complete dominance that it's played in the NATO alliance up to this point? Well, I don't think we still uh, define conflict in the way of, of military uh, invasion from, from each of the sides. Uh, the conflicts uh, in today's world are more um, economically based, and, um, and, and, and we think that uh, we, can, we can face those conflicts only by making the European Union stronger. Um, but uh, 
the thing uh, when uh, Nietzsche talked about the, the, the Polish economical miracle and about Poland as a green island of the United, of the European Union is uh, uh, was of course uh, very nice and, and interesting. However, uh, <coughs> was not correct. I mean, this there are completely different reasons why Poland became a green island uh, in the European Union. Firstly. Poland is not a member of the Eurozone, we're still using our Polish currency, which is Polish Zloty, which helps us uh, in uh, exporting uh, our goods to the Western uh, part of the European Union. Then we still have extremely good uh, uh, financial flows from the European funds, which, able, which enable us to build a lot of, and invest a lot of in the infrastructure, which, uh, which, which makes the, the country economy bigger. Uh, and again, uh, <coughs> uh, this special uh, situation of not being in the in the eurozone and uh, and, and still using euros uh, euros from the euro funds helped us in making uh, uh, in, in, in still in, uh, keeping the the, 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 the positive uh, uh, GDP growth. Um, uh, and, and going back to your question, um, well, you know, uh, we are more afraid of uh, economic, uh, um, uh, let's say, that in brackets, invasion than uh, than than of, of military invasion. I mean, uh, we are afraid of of having too many Russian investments, which are not purely business oriented, but in many cases they are politically oriented. Uh, and uh, this is why we want to uh, to keep uh, as as bigger and as uh, as smart the European Union as it can be. So I guess two kind of follow-up questions: Do you, what, if anything, can the United States you know meaningfully do? Because I think you accurately note that um, you know the conflicts or the dangers that uh, that part of the world faces they're not military in nature. It's not that Russia's going to send a bunch of tanks uh, you mm -hmm. know from Kaliningrad. Um, it's, you know, as, as you say, it's that, that they'll, you know, kind of influence things via energy prices, via gas and oil and economic deals. What, if anything, can the United States do to assist Poland in meeting those challenges? Because it, it amazes me, frankly, how overwhelmingly focused many of the foreign policy debates in the United States, particularly during presidential elections, are particular. you know, they're focused on military threats that don't really seem to exist anymore, but they, they almost never mention these sorts of kind of economic, um, I don't know, struggles or, you know, uh, struggles for economic influence that seem to be the most important thing. So what, how can the U.S. help? Or do Poles expect it, you know, that they need to kind of, they need to handle that within the confines of their relationship with the European Union? There's really not a whole lot that America can do. Well, you know, the, the answer is very simple. I mean, we still expect that the, the, the economic uh, presence of the United States in Poland and in this region will be bigger and bigger. This is why we welcome so uh, so warmly uh, U.S. companies uh, willing to search the shale gas in Poland. Um, this is uh, this is why we uh, cooperating with uh, with U.S. Uh, <coughs> U.S. Uh, big companies like um, uh, uh, like I don't know. Uh, one moment. Like uh, uh, North of Daman or, or, or others, or Bank, for example. Uh, so, uh, more economic presence, more US companies investing in Poland, um, and, 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 and that's, that's basically the, 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 the simplest uh, receipt, uh, receipt for, for, for the development of, of the relations and uh, for the development of, of, of and, and limiting threats. Um, so going back, I guess, I know we were talking about the Eurozone and the Euro there for a second. Um, has there been, because I know in the Baltics, for example, um, you know, Estonia made some pretty dramatic sacrifices in order to kind of keep itself on the path for Euro membership. It's like it since joined uh, the Euro, but, you know, to get there, it had to do some, some pretty gnarly budget cuts and, and spending cuts and stuff like that. Um, has there been any disagreement on... Uh, you know, as the Eurozone has obviously had a pretty rough go of things over the past couple of years, um, has there been any kind of second thoughts among kind of the, the policymaking elite that, you know what, the European Union is great, but maybe 
you know, being out of the euro has served us pretty well. Maybe we, we really ought to not join it. Um, because, if, you know, if you look at the countries that have weathered the kind of economic turbulence the best, Sweden, Poland, they have their own currencies. And it, it, it seems that, at least to me, I would, I would think that some people have to have second thoughts by, by this point in time, seeing kind of what a mess things have become in the eurozone. Well, from week to week, uh, uh, more people have second thoughts about that. The problem is that uh, while signing the accession, accession treaty to the European Union, we also agreed that we will join uh, the Eurozone. However, we did not uh, set the, uh, uh, the deadline. And, uh, and, and uh, still, it is up to us to, to choose the right uh, uh, date to, to join the, the Eurozone. Uh, till the moment of the uh, economic crisis which occurred in Europe, uh, most of the Polish politicians were uh, backing the, 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 this idea of, of joining the Euro as soon as possible, and as fast as possible. But uh, today, uh, more and more the same politicians is uh, recognizing that uh, uh, actually, thanks to not making this decision and not being in the Eurozone, we still can have a politic positive uh, GDP growth, and uh, we still can, uh, can enjoy the, the, the good uh, and relatively better economy than other, other countries in the Eurozone. Uh, however, joining the, the Euro has its, uh, its own pluses, and we need to also to, uh, to, to have that in mind. Um, and then I'm sure, uh, uh, sure that our government is still thinking about joining the Euro, but not now. And, uh, this uh, this question, uh, this issue will be raised uh, after the crisis crisis ends, and uh, we will know what are our what is our budget structure and um, whether we still uh, are on the track to fulfill the master criteria or not. Um, great. So I guess jumping back to something we talked about earlier and kind of a little bit off topic of the, the eurozone. Um, back, I guess, to missile defense. So, in you know, in the United States, uh, particularly during the campaign, uh, you hear uh, conservatives, Romney himself, note how I guess actually that you know Obama canceled missile defense in Poland. But what they what they almost never mention is that we are currently pursuing uh, missile defense in Romania, which is you know, not that far away. But to what you know, how do polls actually view the issue? Because there, you know, the U.S. is actually building missile defense in Eastern Europe which is nominally targeted at an, an Iranian threat, the severity of which, I guess, is open to some debate. But, you know, again, in the States, the, the conversation usually stops at, oh, Obama pulled missile defense out of Poland. Um, but, you know, it never then kind of follows up that actually, you know, we, we, we pick, you know, we, they started doing it again relatively soon afterwards, and, and that's, it, that's still remained a major irritant with the Russians. Uh, but how do, how do Poles see that? I mean, do, do you view that system that's being built in Romania, which seems to be on schedule, uh, as, you know, responding to the threat that the, uh, that the earlier missile system, or the one that was canceled, was meant to address? Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's a question uh, from, this, uh, from the environment of political questions, not uh, security questions, I think. Uh, mainly because that even the, the missile defense system that the United States uh, wanted to build in Poland was not exactly to secure Europe and, uh, and Poland, but to secure the United States. The, the problem we have with the missile defense system is that we always wanted to have uh, the system as a part of a bigger uh, NATO defense system. Um, and, uh, and, and this is actually, uh, uh, that was actually the clue of, of the, the whole uh, concept. Um, of course, uh, in Poland, in the very beginning, when uh, Mr. Bush uh, <coughs> offered this, uh, this kind of uh, investment, um, we were extremely, uh, uh, we welcomed this uh, warmly, and we wanted to build it because we, we thought uh, this will change the, uh, uh, the, the, the security situation in this uh, region, and especially will show uh, to, to, the, uh, to our eastern partners, to our eastern, eastern colleagues uh, from Russia and, and, and Belarus, that uh, uh, we are still and we, we are keeping our independence and we are still thinking about making our ties with the United States stronger and stronger. 
at the moment, we are not talking about missile defense anymore. And uh, even Polish president uh, recently suggested that it would be good to build our own missile defense system. And uh, probably, uh, probably we will do it after some uh, some years. But uh, now I don't think this is uh, this is the most uh, important question uh, of the Polish security. Now we are joining with uh, warming uh, uh, relations with Russia. We hope these relations will improve uh, even more. Um, we have some positive examples of, of this cooperation with Russia, and. Uh, and, and we, I think, we understood that uh, uh, having this kind of system can also influence badly on relations with our Eastern partners, and we did not want it that, of course. Um, if we, um, if we could, I guess, yeah, maybe talk a little bit more about how uh, you know Polish-Russian relations have been developing the past couple of years. I know after. The, you know, the really tragic plane crash, that yeah. there seemed yeah. to be some, some slight improvement. If we could maybe talk a little bit more about the Polish view of that and I guess how they see that developing, if, if there is a plan or a strategy, how exactly they, they you know, propose to follow through on that. Because uh, I do think from the American perspective, uh, there have, it's the extent to which kind of the, the Polish and American views on the reset or on the appropriate way to deal with Russia, I think they've been a bit exaggerated, uh, you know, as, as best I can tell. There has been a, a pretty significant improvement in how the you know, kind of the Polish-Russian bilateral relationship, and that's kind of actually preceded to a certain extent um, some of the improvements we saw at the reset. Well, you know, uh, of course, this uh, the, the, the tragic crash in Smolensk uh, became a kind of uh, uh, catalysator of, of, of our relations, and and, uh, and after this crash, um, uh, we can. Think and even talk about something which uh, which which can be a great uh, new opening in, in Polish-Russian relations. Of course, we still uh, we are still facing um, uh, some uh, problems, but those problems are mainly based on economic uh, economical things, and uh, and then they are uh, aimed at the single uh, single companies uh, in Poland who are willing to export something to, to Russia. However, generally speaking, uh, the relations with Russia are uh, have improved uh, mainly because of two uh, uh, two things. One is uh, that we have a special commission on on hard topics with Russians, and this commission is meeting every uh, uh, very very often, and uh, they are really willing and they are really aimed at. Uh, at solving uh, problematic issues, and most of our problematic issues is, uh, is uh, concerns the history of, of the two nations. Uh, so uh, those are mostly discussions among historians. Uh, however, uh, those discussions would not be possible without uh, permission and uh, and the green light from the Kremlin. Uh, and then uh, from that we uh, we expect and, and we see that. Uh, uh, Russians are also, they, they also want to, to improve uh, uh, relations with Poland. Secondly, relations with Pol uh, between Poland and Russia became uh, uh, warmer when uh, uh, Russians understood that we are an uh, extremely influential uh, member of the European Union. And uh, they cannot talk only with Germans and, and, and French uh, about uh, their relations with the European Union. They also need to uh, include in this uh, discussion uh, uh, smaller members of the European Union, and uh, and, uh, and, and this is uh, those are main uh, uh, presumptions of 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 of, uh, of 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 having better relations uh, and, and uh, making this relations better with, with Russia. Uh, yes, I guess I want to maybe push us a little bit more. So I, I think that's you know all been very well said, but don't you think there's a real risk that some of this improvement could be uh, potentially uh, put at risk uh, if there's a radical change in policy as seems likely, you know, I, I think the extent to which, you know, Romney's complaints about the reset, I think it's a, it's a mistake to, to view that purely as election posturing. I mean, if you look at the people that he has surrounding him, his Russian advisors and the people giving him foreign policy advice, um, I don't think that they're just 
posturing when they say that they oppose the reset. They think it's a really bad idea. I mean, I think they really believe that. Is it possible that a much more kind of aggressive American posture could potentially put at risk some of those you know, tentative but real improvements that have taken place over the past couple of years? Well, two things. Uh, firstly, uh, Polish-Russian relations are built between Poles and Russians, not between Americans, Poles and Russians. So this is one thing. Uh, the second thing is that, uh, um, you know, uh, Russia, Russia, especially after parliamentary elections and presidential elections, uh, is a very easy, uh, uh, easy boy to be beaten because uh, all Europe is extremely uh, pessimistic about Russia. All Europe is extremely confused of, on, on what uh, Putin and Medvedev did during the parliamentary and, uh, and presidential elections. And even when Angela Merkel, uh, uh, Chancellor of, the, of the Germany, uh, is starting to talk about not only business, but also human rights and democratization is important. Uh, and, and she's telling that uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to the Russian authorities. Uh, then the situation became uh, really, uh, really serious, and uh, that's why Russia is so easy to be beaten. But uh, uh, let's be frank. I mean, uh, Russia is not a threat. This is this is a country which uh, has a long uh, twenty years of history of, uh, um, of of not having successes, and, um, and and we shouldn't be afraid of Russia. We should be afraid of what will be Russia if uh, rapid change uh, will, uh, will occur in Russia. We should be afraid what would happen if, uh, uh, if, if uh, current authorities in Russia and current, uh, uh, and, and current president and prime minister and, uh, and the, uh, the, the ministers would be, uh, would be changed with, uh, uh, with people who have no influence in special forces, who have no influence in army, who have no influence in regions in Russia, and what will happen there? I mean, uh, that's the, the real problem of, of, of relations with Russia. And not that, uh, uh, that Russia is not democratic. Russia is not democratic for, uh, f from, uh, f from at least 70 years. And, uh, and, and uh, the only difference is that for the last 20 years or 40 years, uh, we, are, we can talk with Russia and we were able to agree on several points with Russia. We as a, as a Western world, and uh, and, and uh, that's what is good. I mean, the, from my point of view, the, the real problem is what uh, 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 how China will react and and what China will do, and how China will reform itself, and how China will face and will solve the uh, social problems then, uh, which will occur in China. Uh, um, uh, and, and this is the problem which, which can be really scary for the world economy and also for the U.S. Well, it's interesting to hear. I mean, I, I'm, I'm frankly, I guess, glad to hear that uh, the threat, which, again, I, I think is completely exaggerated, that, that Russia poses is viewed somewhat, I don't know, positively or optimistically, um, I guess, in Poland and that, in that part of the world. But, um, I, I, you know, I don't... I guess I just want to make the note that I, I don't think that, uh, look, it's, it's an election, Romney's going to say a couple of things that he thinks are going to play well that he might not really believe, but um, I think that the kind of the hostility that the current Russian system, and that I guess even almost, yeah, the entire country engenders among certain parts of the American elite, it, it's really pretty hard to exaggerate, and I think uh, it's good to hear that it's not viewed in kind of narrow terms of military threat or anything, anything like that, but I, I think over here it very frequently is, and so it's um, it's always interesting to hear kind of the um, discrepancy between what Americans say other people think and other countries think and how they view it uh, and how often people in those very same countries do. Because, you know, one of Romney's recurring themes that he's, and not just the countries of Poland, other countries as well, but one of the recurring themes that uh, he's hit in his all of his foreign policy addresses is Obama's weakness and Obama's accommodation. And this has put countries at risk and they're at threat from all these other hostile countries, and I guess it's just, it's comforting to hear that, you know, that kind of simplistic view is not necessarily shared in, in, in other countries as well. Um, I guess if we could talk maybe a little bit, and this is a very different uh, topic than what we were just discussing, but you know, Romney also stressed kind of the Polish support for American, I guess, military uh, involvement in Iraq and Afghanistan. 
Um, if we could talk maybe a little bit about, I guess, particularly Afghanistan, because that is now starting to wind down. I, I know some of these troops that were surged in by Obama have, have started to withdraw. If we could talk a little bit about how Poland actually views that, how they see their role in Afghanistan, to what extent they really think it's important. Uh, I think it's actually kind of surprising how little attention the uh, kind of Afghan war has gotten in the U.S. campaign so far, but it's still a really big deal, obviously. Um, so if we could talk a little bit about the Polish view of how things, like their, how they see their view, uh, role there, and how they think things ought to develop over the next couple of years. I mean, uh, the, the biggest, uh, what well, we joined to, uh, to Afghanistan uh, coalition uh, because of Article 5th um, uh, of, the, of the NATO Treaty. Um, and uh, uh, we wanted to send people help and we wanted to show that NATO uh, can stand together and can create army and can uh, be effective uh, in the foreign missions. And uh, I think this, uh, this has been done and this has been achieved. Um, however, we understand that uh, being all the time for all those years in Afghanistan and uh, scheduling our presence for next years is uh, it's, it's not the, the most uh, uh, wise thing we can do. Uh, Poles are, uh, have their own schedule of withdrawing from Afghanistan. We are keeping, uh, to, uh, we are sticking to this schedule, and we want to uh, to change our present and transform our present uh, present there from the transform from the military presence to provide some development aid and. Uh, and some uh, uh, technical and, and training uh, support for the Afghan uh, army and then the Afghan police structures. Uh, so this is this is our our vision of of, 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 of the future of Poland in Afghanistan. And um, uh, and of course uh, the missions in Iraq and, and Afghanistan they helped our army in in terms of transforming itself in terms of being proof in in the battlefield and in terms of uh, changing some aspects of our own training in, in the army. Um, they also improved uh, uh, equipment and, and thanks to these missions uh, some of our troops uh, have the, the, the most uh, uh, modern equipment uh, which is used and uh, which is needed on, on this kind of missions. Um, but again, uh, uh, also these missions showed that uh, we cannot expect too much from Americans. Uh, we wanted to, uh, to, to, to profit uh, somehow economically from the mission in Iraq. Uh, however, this was uh, not done, um, unfortunately. Um, and uh, also, uh, we really wanted to uh, really want to, to develop uh, economic relations with uh, in Afghanistan. We have uh, a lot of experience in building uh, uh, infrastructure and we can be helpful in this. Mm. However, still uh, we think that, uh, that you know, uh, this, this kind of uh, support uh, uh, and this presence on this kind of mission is a very important factor of showing that NATO can be united and can uh, uh, can act as a real uh, military power, not only diplomatic power. So it would be accurate to say, from if I understand you accurately, that um, you know Poland did not uh, wasn't chastened by these. They didn't, you know, they, their lessons that they took away from that from their involvement uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq were were broadly positive in the sense that this demonstrates the the capabilities of a NATO. Because I, I think certainly certain certain parts of the of, of, uh, uh, of defense analysts in, in the U.S. would say that you know these the kind of I don't know, the experience in Afghanistan, uh, which has been pretty mixed so far in terms of the actual track record of how the war's gone, shows that, you know, NATO isn't working as it's supposed to, that it, that it needs a lot of changes, and that there needs to be, you know, a real effort to kind of boost the participation by other, you know, European allies. Um, but if I'm hearing you, it sounds like the, the, the lessons that, that you took away were uh, maybe not that they were something more positive that this is this is how things ought to work and this was a relatively well done I don't know. A, a relatively well, I'm not, I'm not talking operating. about other parts of this mission. I'm talking about the uh, Polish part and how how we feel that why we joined Afghanistan and 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 we of course we are of course aware of of of, uh, of, of, of technical and structural issues in this mission. 
and, um, and, and we think that improving this problem would not be possible without being present in this mission. I mean, uh, uh, now we can talk what is what 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 NATO should change uh, inside um, as a practitioners because we know uh, what are the real problems uh, which uh, which are um, emerging from uh, from not having a, a dynamic uh, structures uh, without proper command. Uh, so, so what I'm talking about is only the Polish experience on, on, on this and not the whole mission itself as such. Um, so I know we're, we're, I guess, almost out of time here. I just wanted to briefly, I guess, talk a little bit. So on the subject of NATO, um, I guess Poland's view or how you see the future of the alliance, uh, I guess in some general sense, and also, I guess, particularly in terms of NATO expansion, um, do you think that this is a real priority that needs to be pursued? It's kind of, uh, it seems to have been put on the back burner uh, for a while. Um, do you think that this is something that ought to be brought forward, that, for example, I don't know, Georgia, potential Georgian membership in NATO is something that, you know, ought to kind of get back on the agenda uh, list? Or, you know, do you think that the way that the, the, the alliance in, in general has functioned over the past several years is, is, is basically okay? There's nothing that really needs to change dramatically about it. Well, Georgia itself is a complicated question. I mean, uh, the whole Western world took, uh, uh, gave a lot of credit to, um, uh, to, to Mr. Saakashvili. And now uh, we faced, uh, we really faced some problems. Uh, and, and we're still thinking whether we can uh, name Georgia as a democratic country or not, or the country in the trans transformation. and. Uh, what is the future and in which direction this government is heading in the present of Georgia? And uh, I think definitely NATO should, uh, should keep uh, its door open for, for, for all countries which are eligible to join NATO. And uh, especially, especially in that countries, countries like, uh, like Georgia, Ukraine, uh, uh, who are crucial for the European security. Great. Well, I think uh, that's about all that I have. I really appreciate the chance to, uh, to speak with you today. It was certainly uh, good to get another perspective um, on, on some of these things, one that is sadly uh, not heard as frequently um, over in the, in the States as, as I think it really ought to be. Um, I, I think, obviously, a lot of your, your points are very well received and very well taken, but I think, frankly, to a lot of Americans, they sound pretty radical. I think if a presidential candidate um, or you know, some even running for Congress tried to make some of those points, uh, they would um, they would face quite a lot of pushback because the, the, the entire prism through which we view kind of foreign relations and, and stuff over here is is frequently very different. Well, I understand that, but I, I always understand that you know discussing from your perspective, your perspective of the country who is uh, uh, on the other side of the of the earth uh, and uh, is you know at least uh, uh, eleven times bigger than Poland. Um, uh, has some uh, different, uh, uh, and, and those is, this is this is quite uh, normal to have different accents on, on different uh, issues. And, and from your perspective, some of my points uh, could not be uh, understandable or are not not as important as uh, general points. Uh, but again, that's probably the the, 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 the problem and the, the bigger issue in, in the central in the central East Europe that. Uh, uh, we are far from uh, assessing uh, in general terms, and we are always having a, a lot of details uh, uh, which uh, which have uh, occurred in the history, and we we putting those details into the future while we are shaping our policy. Great. Well, thanks again, Wojtek. I really appreciate. Thank it. you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to meet you.